up we go. I'm Detective Chief Inspector Gary Jubilant from the New South Wales Police Homicide Squad. I'm leading the investigation into the disappearance of uh, William Tyrrell. As you know, William Tyrrell disappeared three years ago from his grandmother's yard at Kendall. Despite extensive investigations over the past three years, at this point in time the matter has remained unsolved. I'm here today to address the media because we're very mindful of the public's interest in this matter. 
uh, we're very mindful of the public's expectation that a crime of this nature should be, uh, should be solved. I can assure you that we haven't given up on the investigation. I can assure you that we will not give up on the investigation. The investigation is currently very active. Uh, it is unusual to brief an investigation midway through the investigation, but we are mindful of the interest in, in this matter. The circumstances in which William disappeared lead us to believe that there was human intervention and we're following up the investigation along those lines. It's been 12 months since I last spoke to the media in relation to this matter and that was in relation to the announcement of a million dollar award. That one million dollar award, which is unprecedented in New South Wales, is still on offer for anyone that has information that leads to the recovery of uh, William Tyrrell. I'd also like to stress that the type of information that we're looking for, and I want common sense to be used in relation to this, I don't want to get bogged down with um, pieces of information that are not relevant. It's three years down the track, let's be realistic. We're not interested in sightings of a, a child running around in a Spider-Man suit playing in the McDonald's car park. What we are interested in is people that have genuine information. That information might be in the form of someone that has concerns about someone they know, someone within their family that uh, the way they react when William Tyrrell's name is mentioned uh, might uh, cause suspicion. We're interested in speaking to those people. If we speak to those people, we can do, with, do it with the strictest of confidence and I would encourage those people to come forward. But please don't waste our time. We're not interested in uh, information from clairvoyants or people that have dreams. We're focused on this investigation, following up information that's relevant to William's disappearance. Be mindful that William is now six years of age, if he is still alive. Obviously we have grave concerns for his, his welfare, but this is a unique investigation and we're keeping all possibilities op open, open in regards to that. I'm happy to take uh, questions in relation to this. Before I do, I'd just also like to address the recent information that's come out in the media about the foster care and the biological family. I'd like to say that uh, this has not impacted on the investigation in any way. The foster care parents that uh, had custody of William at the time of his disappearance were bringing up William in a loving family and the situation between foster care and the biological family played no part in this uh, William's disappearance. Um, I'd also like to uh, just reinforce that uh, we're not giving up on this investigation. It doesn't sit well with me personally that three years down the track we haven't solved this investigation. It does not sit well with the members of Strike Force Roseanne, the task to investigate this matter, nor the New South Wales Police. We know there is an expectation the crime of this nature is, will be solved and we intend to solve it. Simple answer to that, yes. I'm, I'm standing here saying I have ruled out the foster care parents and have ruled out the biological parents as being involved in this investigation. It's been described that uh, Bill Spenning was a person of interest. Is he still a person of interest? This is a current investigation. I won't speak uh, specifically in regards to persons of interest. We keep an open mind to, to everything until this is solved, but I will not uh, discuss uh, specific persons of interest. Well, in 12 months, in 12 months can you narrow down how many persons of interest with no names that you may have? This is a dynamic investigation. I think last time I spoke to the media we talked about uh, a large number of uh, persons of interest that we have in this matter. Uh, a substantial amount of those persons of interest have now been reduced, but because of the dynamic nature of this investigation, that list of persons of interest is constantly being added to. So we are reducing the persons of interest without going into methodology. We prioritise our lines of inquiry, we prioritise the persons of interest and we target them. And we make no apologies to the vigorous way in which we target persons of interest. This is a serious crime that we, we're treating uh, with the um, intensity that it deserves and we target persons of interest until we can uh, thoroughly eliminate them. Obviously this is a complex investigation. Can you give us then a ballpark figure of how many people you're looking at? I can give you a ballpark figure, it's in the, in the hundreds but then we break that down from high priority persons of interest to uh, more uh, low risk persons of interest. And the strike force is comprised of members from uh, homicide, from local area command and also specialist commands. The strike force Roseanne concentrate on the high priority persons of interest. Um, who is the majority of those suspects? Are they tech defenders? 
I think we need to keep an open mind in, in regards to this. There's an assumption right from the start that a three-year-old child's been abducted that may or may not be uh, a, a sexual uh, predator. Um, we're keeping an open mind to that. I can't break down specifically how many uh, uh, persons of interest are on the basis of suspicion attached to their this, um, sexual interest in, uh, in, in children. But I do want to stress this is a unique investigation. I'm very mindful that uh, we, we've looked at all, all possibilities. and. Uh, I keep an open mind to it. I hear stories from overseas uh, of situations where children have disappeared for uh, decades and then and turned up in circumstances. I also hear stories of uh, situations where um, incidents that have occurred that are by accident and have been covered up and then, uh, then revealed. So we are keeping an open mind to it and our focus is not just sex offenders or let's break it down, pedophiles, we're not just looking at that aspect of it. And we're also mindful that uh, our research tells us that the child at, at the age of three doesn't necessarily fit into the parameter of uh, pedophiles or fit into the uh, parameters of uh, childless couples where young, young babies have been, uh, been abducted. It's that unique nature of this investigation that's making this particularly uh, uh, trying. Yeah, we haven't got a result yet, but, and so clearly it's very frustrating. Just how much progress have you made in three years? Every day, and to stand here, it, it sounds, it, it, it sounds counterintuitive to say that we're making progress, and here I am saying three years down the track we haven't solved it. But each day we're learning more about what happened at the time and we're eliminating people. So I'd say we're making progress each day. We've got a body of evidence that uh, now is uh, extreme. This is, uh, in terms of scales of investigation, we've got over 4,000 pieces of information. We're following up. Progress is being made. It doesn't help the family. They've got this unresolved grief that uh, they're looking for answers for, for uh, what's happened to William. We're very mindful of that and uh, we don't think this has been a success by any, any stretch of the imagination. Three years down the track, I'm not standing here saying, look, we're working hard. I'm saying we're not going to give up. We're going to keep fighting until we find out what's happened to William and help the families uh, um, bring some form of uh, closure. There, we liaise with the uh, state coroner. I've met with the state coroner in relation to this. Uh, the appropriate time for this matter to be referred to uh, uh, the coroner would be when we've exhausted all our lines of inquiry. Um, at this point in time, we're far from exhausting all our, point, uh, all our lines of inquiry, so at this point in time, it would be premature for the matter to be referred to the coroner. Sorry, Gary, do you mind if I just get you to say that again for me? Um, at what point is the the trigger point, the referring it, and I base this on my experience in homicide investigation, is when we've exhausted all the lines of inquiry. At this point in time, we haven't. If this matter was referred to the coroner, basically, uh, and I can't speak on behalf of the coroner, but from my experience, it would be, well, continue on with the investigation when you've exhausted that, then might, may be the time for a coronial in investigation. I'm personally hoping it doesn't get to a coronial investigation because that would be indicative of us finding out uh, what's happened to uh, William. You mentioned those overseas cases. Have you been in touch with investigators in other cases around the world, for example, Maryland and Chad? We have, I won't go into specific, the, the specifics of the people that I've spoken to, but yes, we have spoken to identified experts overseas in relation to this. Anyone that we believe that could value add to the investigation, we're open to, uh, to speaking to them. One thing that has done speaking to the experts overseas is that uh, it's reinforced to us that uh, we're on the right track in the way that we're approaching, uh, approaching this investigation. You've got a million dollar reward, which you said is unprecedented. Does it give you the view, and you've heard nothing, no one's rattled the cage on that. Do you think that you are dealing with one person alone here and that there's no one else knows anything about it? I, think, I certainly think that's a reasonable assumption that could be made, that uh, the fact that $1 million is here on offer for someone to, uh, to uh, come forward and claim. So we do look at that aspect of it. What I'm appealing to, and this is why, and I go back to what I said a, a few moments ago, is that anyone that's got any suspicion about someone close to them, come forward. That's the type of information we're interested in, in now. And the $1 million dollars is there on offer. So if your suspicion is proved correct, um, well, then you've got a legitimate claim to, uh, to that information. But someone out there, even if they've op operated alone, would be acting strange in regards to uh, this investigation. When they see this, when they see it in the media or on the front page of the paper, there's going to be a strange reaction uh, by the person responsible for this. 
I want that person to feel the pressure. I want that person to feel that everyone's looking at them. And uh, let's see uh, where that takes us. So that is a line of inquiry. If there's one person who's working alone, <coughs> Yes, one, one of many lines of inquiry. As I said, the stress, it's a, a, we're keeping an open mind. We saw a statement being put out, sorry, we saw a statement put out from a foster family overnight. Um, you're obviously in, in regular touch with them. How are they doing three years on? Look, I, I, I've got nothing but admiration for them, the way that they're, they're handling this situation. I don't think it, it is basically a living nightmare. This unresolved grief that they've got, um, it's difficult for them to get on with their life. Um, they're decent people and, and they're, they're suffering, as, as you would imagine. I think anyone with uh, just an ounce of empathy would understand uh, what, what they're going through. And uh, that's what we're, we're feeling the pressure as the investigators and the people responsible for helping uh, find out what's happened to them. We're feeling that, uh, that pressure and uh, we want to uh, assist them by uh, solving this matter. Uh, Mr Kimberlin, you've had a lot of people contacting you saying they've had dreams, they've had visions of what's happened to William. I mean, how frustrating has that been for you when you're trying to Very annoying, very annoying, and uh, I, I think uh, quite often they prey on vulnerable people. I've seen it not just in this investigation, in other investigations where they uh, involve themselves in the investigation based on a dream or you know, a claim to be clairvoyance. I've never seen a clairvoyant uh, solve, a, solve an investigation. It's just a distraction. It's a distraction that takes up our time, and we'd like to focus on, on the facts and information, proper information to, to follow up on. When you announced the reward last year, you said that any, that, that person who came forward with information would be absolved from any charges themselves of concealing a criminal offence. Does that offer still stand? That offers, it does still stand. If, if someone's concealed a serious offence, and I won't go into the, the nitty gritty of the, the legalities of it, but if someone's been sitting on this information and then come forward, the concealment of that offence ends there. So what I'm saying, if you've got information, you've got any concerns, come forward and we can deal with it. Well, our main focus is finding out what's happened to William. And when I speak to the, uh, the, the family, that, uh, that's what they want to find out. It's not about, uh, it's not about vengeance or, or revenge here. They want to find out what's happened, happened to William. And this is what we need to bring the closure for them and finding out what's happened. You've got, you got a result with Matthew Levison that something that was, this is on a personal note for you, you drove that and um, almost, some say, like an obsession, but you got the result. Uh, and that result is gratifying for you. The importance of this one, how would, I mean, you've been around a long time, is this one that, that, uh, that just gets to you? Look, I, I think it would be unfair fair to me, for me to talk about it, how it impacts on me personally, when I, I also see how it impacts on the team that I'm working with. Everyone working on this investigation is impacted upon by this. This is a crime that, uh, you know, it, it's once in a generation type crime, it's once in a, a career type investigation that you work on, and I can assure you it's weighing very heavily on all of us that uh, we want to uh, uh, solve this. And that translates into the way that we approach it and the effort that we put in. I, I missed the first part of who who had. Look, there's a lot of a uh, lot of people that uh, make commentary on on this. Um, I say I say we're the ones investigating the matter. We're fully aware of the circumstances. We know what happened in Kendall and uh, around Kendall and, and all all the bush tracks. That's pure speculation on on their behalf. So were those cars still at we're still looking, looking at the cars. From the last time that we put the appeals out for the cars, we've received a, a, a um, lot of information, and that's a line of inquiry that we're following up. So, as, as I said, and it is unusual for an active investigation to, to go into how we're approaching it, but because of the uniqueness of this investigation and the public's interest, we prioritise our lines of inquiry. So we, we'll have a person of interest and we'll focus on that person of interest, we'll focus on the cars, and uh, we've got lines of inquiry going all over the place. We've got our dedicated strike force, but I've also got access to all the other investigators across the state if we need them. There was a, a car seized at one point matching the description of the graphics that put out there. Could, can you say if that's going to be ruled out or is it still...? I, I can say that's been eliminated. How many suspects have you eliminated in the past 12 months? Would you say dozens or hundreds? 
Hundreds. Hundreds. And, and look, it, it sounds like a very strong term when I say suspect or person of interest. Basically, these are people that we feel that we uh, need further uh, inquiries to be carried out to eliminate them. But to, in terms of persons of interest, we've eliminated hundreds in the past 12 months since I last spoke. The, the so-called revelations that were the Boogie background, obviously not news to yourself or the investigation team. How would you describe them? Look, they're peripheral distractions. We focus on what, what's important. We knew the, uh, the background to William, so it's just a peripheral uh, distraction. But uh, one thing that I could say, uh, knowing the biological family and the foster family, that uh, you know, if you could respect their privacy, it would be appreciated. As I've said, I've eliminated them from, from the investigation, and uh, it is just a, a distraction. All right, good luck. Okay, thank you.